Did you ever want to create your own currency? Let's create our own fungible token in this tutorial using the Ethereum blockchain. But what is actually a fungible token? I have two Swiss francs here. And what is special about them, this one and this one, they have the exact same value. So this is worth one franc and this is worth one franc. And when I put them together, they are worth two francs. So if somebody holds this franc and another this one, we agree that both francs have the exact same value. What are examples? As I show now, for example, the, the fiat currencies, they are fungible. But when we have, for example, a painter, two different painters, they are called non-fungible because one painter is worth something else than the other. We cannot really put them into relation like that. When we use Ethereum smart contracts, we use the standard called ERC20 to create fungible tokens. It is a standard interface which each smart contract needs to implement in order to be compliant with ERC20. Let's start with the read functions that a ERC20 contract needs to implement. We have the total supply. The total supply just returns a number how many tokens are there of such an ERC20 token. Balance off. You can get, give an address of a user or of an account and it will return the balance of this user of this, for this token. Allowance. The allowance specifies how much the owner allows a spender to use from his tokens. The right functions to be compliant with ERC20 are transfer. You can specify the to and the amount, meaning that you want to transfer some tokens to another address with a specified amount. Approve. You approve a spender with a specified amount telling how much you allow him to spend from your balance. And last but not least, we have the transfer from function, which actually can transfer from an account to another account using a specified amount. This is normally only allowed when somebody has already approved for a spender to spend his tokens. Let's get our hands dirty and let's write our own ERC20 contract using Open Zeppelin. And in the next step, we will add some features to it like burning and minting. And we will see how we can list such a token on a decentralized exchange such that it can be traded by everyone. So welcome back with Remix, our IDE, where we develop everything here in this course. I have an empty project here and now we would like to create our own ERC20 token. You can see the contracts folder is empty and I'm creating a new file and I call our token mysupertoken.sol which will be our ERC20 token in the end. Let's start with the project. Um, we add the license identifier on the top and then the solidity version which we would like to use and then the contract itself my super token and that's it we can see that solidity already compiled our contract when we go to the comp compiler we can see that we can compile it and everything runs fine. So our contract, everything is good. Now, it's not an ERC20 token, obviously now. So what we would like to do is we would like to use a standardized implementation of such an ERC20 token. And for that, we are using Open Zeppelin, which provide us with a big amount of standardized contracts for different use cases. For example, ERC20, ERC721, which will be non-fungible tokens, and many other things like governance, upgradability, or access control for smart contracts. 
So what we can do is we can import this npm package from Open Zeppelin, and we just do that here, and we say import at Open Zeppelin slash contracts. That's the npm package itself. And when we go to this Git repository, we can see that in contracts, token, ERC20, ERC20.sol, here is a standard implementation of such a contract. So we say dot slash token slash ERC20 slash ERC20.sol. Let's save that. And let's see what happens. Our compiler just run through and we can see that when we go to dependencies here, NPM, we can see that Open Zeppelin was successfully imported. So let's go to see this contract. We have it here, which we import into our contract. And now you can see here, we have all these standard functions that we want the name, symbol, decimals, total supply, balance of, transfer, allowance, and so on, which is all added to this contract. So we want to use it in our contract. So we say my super token is ERC20. And that's inheriting all the functionality from this ERC20.sol. Now, what we need to do, let's come back here. We can see that there is a constructor here and we can call this with a name and with a symbol. So when we call this constructor, the, the, this variable's name and symbol will be initialized by our value. <coughs> That's what we can do now. So we can add our constructor, constructor, and we can call the ERC20 constructor as this. And now we can say, we can give it a name. So my super token and the symbol MST. And for our constructor, we don't want to do anything. We just wanna pass these strings over to the erc20.sol constructor, which will initialize our token with the name and with the symbol. Let's see if it compiles. We can see everything compiles successfully. What we can do now is we can deploy this contract to a Remix virtual machine. So it's not really on a blockchain, but it's in our virtual machine. We can deploy such a um, smart contract. We can see here we have a user account, gas limit and the value, and we choose a contract which we would like to deploy our my super token. We just press deploy and everything works fine. Now we have here deployed contracts which we can access. And when we go to total supply, we have zero. So we don't have any of this token. Symbol, MST, name, my super token, decimals, standard 18, and so on. What we would like to do now is we would like to mint some token. So actually right now we have a token contract which has all the functionality, but nobody really owns one token of that. So what we can do is we can call the mint function, which is implemented in this ERC20, um, ERC20.sol contract, and we can mint some amount of tokens to someone. So let's call the message sender. That will be the one that deploys the contract. And we say we want to mint 100 tokens to this one. We can redeploy the contract and we can see how much is now, let's see, let's delete it, let's deploy it again and now we can see 
how much is the total supply and we see it's 100. We have an account 5PE which deploy the contract and when we go to see what is the balance of, of, this, con of this address we can see that it's exactly 100. So we have minted 100 of our tokens to the message sender who has deployed the contract. What he can do now is he can transfer these tokens. So he can transfer to another address a specified amount. So let's see, we have the second address here. We grab that, we come back and we say we would like to transfer to the second address 20 tokens. So we execute a transaction, it went through we still have 100 total supply, but when we go to the balance of this account, it is only 80. And when we go to the other account and we check the balance of the other account, we can see that he has now 20 of our token. So we can move around the amount of the token. We have just created our first ERC20 token. It is compliant with the ERC20 standard, so we can actually provide liquidity on a decentralized exchange and trade it on such a platform. Next, we will dive more into detail with minting and burning and more specific function of such ERC20 tokens. And then in the end, we will add our token to a decentralized exchange such that everyone can trade it. So stay tuned.